On September 24, 2022, about 7,000 people attended the memorial service of Sonny Barger. While telling you about Hell's Angels, the name of Sonny Barger came up time and again. We all know that Sonny Barger is the founder of Hell's Angels, but what was he like in real life? What motivated him to choose the life of an outlaw? What was his achievement? How dark was his mind? Today, I am going to tell you about it all. Ralph Hubert Barger Jr. was born in Modesto, California on October 8, 1938, the son of Catherine Carmella, nay Rich, and Ralph Hubert Barger. His father had German and Dutch ancestry, and his mother was of Italian descent. His mother left the family when Barger was four months old, leaving him and his older sister Shirley to be raised by their Pentecostal grandmother and alcoholic father, a day laborer on the Oakland docks. Barger grew up in Oakland in the post-war era, during which time the city's shipbuilding and automobile industries went into decline, leading to a significant rise in unemployment. Growing up, Barger was suspended from school several times for assaulting teachers, and he often fought with other boys. He dropped out of school in the 10th grade. Although many of his school friends became drug addicts, Barger worked at a grocery store and enlisted in the U.S. Army, age 16 in 1955. He was given an honorable discharge 14 months later when it was discovered that he had forged his birth certificate in order to be able to join. Barger had liked the discipline, masculine camaraderie, and learning how to disassemble weapons. After his return from the army, Barger drifted between menial jobs and lived with his father in a single residence at a hotel, later moving in with his sister and her children. In 1956, Barger joined his first motorcycle club, the Oakland Panthers which he founded with a group of fellow military veterans. After that club disbanded, he started riding with another group of bikers, one of whom, Don Boots Reeves, wore a patch that belonged to a defunct nomads chapter of the Hells Angels in North Sacramento. Founding their own Hells Angels club on April 1st, 1957, each member wore the patch, a small skull wearing an aviator cap set within a set of wings, later copyrighted as the Hells Angels Death's Head logo after having replicas made at a trophy store in Hayward. Barger was not the founder of the Hells Angels, as is often claimed. The group was founded in 1948, but he became its best-known member to such an extent that he is often misidentified as the club's founder. He and the Oakland Hells Angels were initially unaware that there were several other loosely affiliated clubs using the same name throughout California. The founding members of the Oakland Hells Angels were basically honest blue-collar or unskilled workers looking for excitement, according to George Baby Huey Weathern, who became the chapter vice president in 1960. Unlike the World War II veterans who formed the early Hells Angels chapters, Many of the founding members of the Oakland chapter were former servicemen with disreputable military records. Barger described his chapter as a wild bunch. Hey, Mr. President, on behalf of myself and my associates, I volunteer a group of loyal Americans for behind-the-line duty in Vietnam. We feel that a crack group of trained guerrillas could demoralize the Viet Cong and advance the cause of freedom. I like being a Hells Angel. I like the fact that I can ride my motorcycle with a group. I like uh, the events put on. We're having a big party in October for my 65th birthday. After a chance encounter with a member of a pre-existing Hells Angels chapter, Barger learned of the club's history, rules, regulations, and procedures. He was appointed president of the Oakland chapter in 1958, following a series of meetings with Hells Angels from Southern California. With Barger as president, the Oakland Hells Angels traveled around California and amalgamated with the other Hells Angels chapters, dividing territory and forming club bylaws. While infighting did occur between the chapters, Conflicts predominantly arose with other clubs, such as the Gypsy Jokers. When Otto Friedli, the founder of the original San Bernardino Hells Angels chapter, was imprisoned in 1958, Barger was proclaimed de facto national president. One of his first actions was to relocate the club's mother chapter, the national headquarters, from San Bernardino to Oakland. Later that year, Barger suffered a fractured skull during a fight with Oakland police. Although the basic organization was in place when Barger assumed leadership of the club, he introduced additional rules pertaining to new members, 
club officers, and the establishment of new chapters. Under Barger's leadership, the club's membership began to increase. By 1960, the Oakland Hells Angels had established an extensive narcotics network within the club. Some of Barger's rules included no using dope during a meeting and no drug burns. The Hells Angels worked as part-time distributors of drugs in the 1950s and early 1960s. According to George Weathern, who left the Hells Angels in 1972 and went on to testify against the club before entering the Federal Witness Protection Program, in his 1978 book, A Wayward Angel, Barger convened a meeting of the leaders of the Hells Angels and other California motorcycle clubs in 1960, in which the various clubs parleyed over the mutual problem of police harassment. The clubs voted to ally under a 1% patch to be worn on their respective colors. The term refers to a comment allegedly made by the American Motorcyclist Association, AMA, that 99% of motorcyclists were law-abiding citizens, implying the last 1% were outlaws. In 1961, Barger opened the first Hells Angels chapter abroad in New Zealand. The Oakland chapter, with Barger serving as its president, assumed an informal position of authority within the Hells Angels that began following a confrontation with local police and the California Highway Patrol in the aftermath of an outlaw motorcycle meeting in Porterville in September 1963. Although always a predominantly male organization, the Hells Angels had female members until 1964, when Barger imposed a rule making the club male only. He justified the male-only rule on the grounds that female Hells Angels were less able to defend themselves against rival bikers seeking to steal their patches. Barger was employed as a machine operator from 1960 to 1965, when he was dismissed due to extended absences. His criminal record began in 1963 after he was arrested for possession of marijuana. He was arrested again on the same charge the following year, and for assault with a deadly weapon in 1965 and 1966. In the 1965 incident, he forced his pistol into a bar patron's mouth after the man had made disparaging remarks about the Hells Angels. Barger claims the gun fired by accident, but wrote in his 2000 autobiography, Hells Angel, The Life and Times of Sonny Barger and the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Since the motherfucker was already shot in the head, I bent him over the pool table and shot him again. Barger was convicted of assault with the intent to murder. When a rival club of bikers stole Barger's motorcycle, he and his members assaulted them with spiked dog collars, whipped with bull whips, and finally used ball peen hammers to break their fingers. The Oakland Hells Angels maintained a prominent position as first among equals by having the largest membership of any U.S. chapter and because of Barger's esteem among club members internationally. The author and journalist Hunter S. Thompson wrote in his 1967 book, Hell's Angels. The strange and terrible saga of the outlaw motorcycle gangs that in any gathering of Hell's Angels, there is no doubt who is running the show, describing Barger as a six foot, 170 pound warehouseman from East Oakland, the coolest head in the lot, and a tough, quick-thinking dealer when any action starts, and saying of him, by turns he is a fanatic, a philosopher, a brawler, a shrewd compromiser, and a final arbitrator. Barger continually denied that he was the Hells Angels leader, or that Oakland was the club's headquarters, however, saying, there's no charter that's the boss, that's all cops and newspapers. Barger and the Hells Angels, many of whom were military veterans, considered themselves anti-communist and anti-subversive patriots. In 1964, Barger and another Hells Angel, Michael Tiny Walters, told an Oakland Tribune columnist, Our oath is allegiance to the United States of America. If there should be trouble, we would jump to enlist and fight. More than 90% of our members are veterans. We don't want no slackers. When students at the University of California, Berkeley announced an anti-Vietnam War rally, the Oakland Hells Angels denounced the rally as a despicable un-American activity. On October 16, 1965, Barger led a group of Hells Angels in an attack on anti-war demonstrators marching from Berkeley to the Army Terminal in Oakland to protest against munitions shipments. 
The Oakland police reportedly stood aside and let the attack commence, whereas the Berkeley police intervened to stop the bikers from assaulting the protesters. Six Hells Angels members were arrested, and a Berkeley police sergeant suffered a broken leg in the brawl. The Angels maintained that the attack was done in the interest of public safety and the protection of the good name of Oakland, California. During the Summer of Love in San Francisco in 1967, the Hells Angels began to sell PCP, which came to be known as Dust of the Angels, or DOA for short. PCP came to be popular with the hippies during the Summer of Love, owing to its ability to cause hallucinations, and the Angels came to dominate the market for PCP in the Bay Area. Barger later admitted that besides selling PCP, his chapter used to move most of the LSD in the San Francisco area. Selling PCP made the Hells Angels wealthy for the first time, and according to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI agent Tim McKinley, who often investigated Hells Angels-related cases, it was in 1967 that the Hells Angels became a major criminal organization in their own right. Prior to 1967, the Angels had been used as subcontractors for other criminal organizations who used them to distribute cocaine and marijuana. With PCP, the Angels created a vertical monopoly. As PCP lost popularity, the Hells Angels switched to selling methamphetamine, a market that they have dominated ever since. Barger recruited Kenny Maxwell, a former chemist for the Royal Dutch Shell Oil Company, who taught the Hells Angels how to make methamphetamine. No, uh, I don't think we were looked at as a outlaw gang in the 50s. I don't think uh, the gang thing come in until uh, the 90s when the uh, federal government started telling all the local police agencies that if they had a gang problem, they could get federal money, and then everybody became a gang. Barger was one of the Hells Angels present at the Rolling Stones' Altamont Free Concert on December 6, 1969, at which the bikers were reportedly given $500 of beer to provide security. Concert goers and musicians alike were subjected to violence from the Hells Angels, including Marty Balin of Jefferson Airplane, who was knocked unconscious, and audience member Meredith Murdoch Hunter, who was stabbed to death. Barger admitted in his autobiography that the Hells Angels had beat the fuck out of them, the people attending the concert. One of the Hells Angels pointed a gun at Keith Richards when he wanted to leave the stage owing to the violence in front of him. Barger claimed to have been sitting on stage drinking beer when the violence was taking place. As a result of critical media attention given to the HAMC after the concert, he went on K-San, a local Bay Area radio station, to justify the actions of the Hells Angels and to present their side of the story. He asserted that violence only started once the crowd began vandalizing the Angels' motorcycles. Barger referred to the 1970s as a gangster era for the Hells Angels, writing in his autobiography. The other clubs tried to take our reputation from us. The blacks and Latinos didn't like us. White people were scared of us. Hippies no longer dug us. Rednecks couldn't stand us either. Everybody hated us. We became isolated. During this period, Barger's main lieutenants were Sergey Walton, James Jim Jim Brandis, and Kenneth K.O. A police report from April 1970 stated, The subject, Barger, is influential with motorcycle clubs all across the nation. Barger has been unemployed for years and yet is seen with large amounts of money. The money may come from dues he collected from his own chapter, and the franchise money he obtains from chapter charters he has sold in various states. It is known that all Hells Angels deal extensively in the narcotic trade. On April 11, 1970, Barger was arrested on narcotics charges after Donald Howarth, a film studio property manager and 1967 Mr. America from Studio City, was apprehended while walking towards Barger's home with a suitcase containing 17 ounces of cocaine and 30 ounces of heroin with an estimated retail worth of $350,000. Barger temporarily resigned as president of the Oakland chapter in June 1970 to fight the charges, but returned to the position within months after his successor, John Johnny Angel Palomar, was sentenced to a 10-year prison term for shooting a bartender. The drug charges against Barger were later dismissed. He was, however, 
sentenced to 90 days in jail after walking out of a court session. Howarth was convicted and sentenced to serve five years to life in prison. Barger and his wife were among 33 members and associates of the Hells Angels Oakland, San Francisco, Marin County, San Jose, Los Angeles, and Vallejo chapters, indicted on Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, RICO, statutes on June 13, 1979. He and 15 others were arrested during a series of raids carried out in the Bay Area by around 200 Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, and Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, ATF agents. The indictments followed two car bombings targeting law enforcement officers in Northern California, which were blamed on the Hells Angels. The bombings prompted the California Department of Justice to issue a warning to police departments that the Angels were engaged in a campaign to eliminate law enforcement personnel who investigated their drug activities. By 1978, the Hells Angels had branched out from their home state of California and had additional U.S. chapters in Nebraska, Massachusetts, Ohio, New York, Connecticut, North Carolina, and South Carolina. The Angels declared war on the outlaws during a summit of various chapter presidents in Rochester in November 1978. Barger allegedly ordered Hells Angels across the country to kill any outlaw they encounter on site. The feud between the two clubs began in April 1974, when three members of the Hells Angels Lowell chapter were murdered in South Florida on the orders of Outlaws leader James Big Jim Nolan as retribution for an outlaw being beaten by Hells Angels at a New Year's Eve party in New York. According to the FBI, the Hells Angels and the Outlaws were engaged in a conflict over control of the methamphetamine trade in the United States and Canada. Authorities accused the Angels of dominating the production of the drug in the U.S. Barger addressed such allegations by saying, I'm sure there are some individual Angels who've sold methamphetamines, just like I'm sure some cops have sold methamphetamines. I'm sure some of our members own guns, whether legal or not. And I'm sure the government makes a living off of us. Makes a In the late 1970s, Barger and other senior Hells Angels ordered James Buddy Karanite the president of the club's East Coast faction, to organize a peace conference with Outlaw's leaders. The supposed peace meeting, scheduled to be held in an eastern state, was in fact an opportunity for the Hells Angels to assassinate their rival's leadership, according to investigators. Having given his word to the Outlaws that they would be safe at the meeting, Karanite, who characterizes himself as a man of honor, reportedly warned away the Outlaws when he learned of the assassination plot. The warning angered the Angels' hierarchy, and Karanite was demoted from his position as a national officer. Barger and nine other Hells Angels from California and Alaska were extradited to Kentucky to stand trial for conspiring to transport firearms and explosives across state lines. The ten defendants went on trial at Louisville Federal Court beginning in July 1988, accused of plotting to bomb the clubhouse of the Outlaws' Louisville chapter located in the city's Portland neighborhood in retaliation for the killing of John Cleve Webb. Barger was represented by defense attorney Stephen Miller, and Barger's wife worked on the defense team as a paralegal. Barger was released from prison on November 6, 1992, after serving three and a half years of a four-year sentence. On the day of his release, Barger took a flight to Oakland International Airport and attended a homecoming party at the Mountain House, a bar at Altamont Pass in Livermore, at which Johnny Paycheck performed. To celebrate the end of his parole, he held another private party in Livermore on November 6, 1994, which was attended by approximately 700 guests, including the politicians Gary Condit and Ben Nighthorse Campbell, Colorado State Senator Nighthorse Campbell, had allegedly tried to use his influence to have Barger released from prison earlier. In 2000, Barger became a best-selling author with his autobiography, Hell's Angel, The Life and Times of Sonny Barger and the Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club, co-written with Keith and Kent Zimmerman. In his autobiography, he divided the history of the Hell's Angels into four eras, namely the first era, 1950s and 1960s, characterized by drug use and sex, the second era, 1970s, characterized by organized crime, the Third Era, 1980s, 
which he depicts as a period of persecution by the US government, and the Fourth Era, 1990s, which he characterized as a return to the original values of the club in the 1950s and 1960s. He subsequently wrote several biker-related novels. Barger's 21st century books represented a change of image, as Scher and Marsden noted that his earlier writings in the 20th century had gloried in self-congratulatory tales of rapes and murders, while his later books presented himself as a more family-friendly character. A reviewer in the Los Angeles Times on April 21, 2002, called Barger the writer of Romantic Tales of Hell and Heck Raising. In later years, Barger worked to promote motorcycle safety. He co-authored a book on the subject with Darwin Holmstrom, the author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Motorcycles titled Let's Ride, Sonny Barger's Guide to Motorcycling. Together with his lawyer, Fritz Klapp, Barger owned and managed Sonny Barger Productions, a media firm designed to promote his image. Barger left Arizona in October 2016, returning to the Oakland chapter. He remained a popular figure both in the United States and abroad. In May 2017, when Barger visited Paris to promote a French translation of his autobiography, he attracted huge crowds of fans to the Paris clubhouse of the Hells Angels for the book signing.